I'm Sarah Jensen, editor of OEM Off Highway, and welcome to Design and Engineering Insights. Today, I'll be speaking with Alexander Shea, Chief Commercial Officer of Electrification at Allison Transmission, about some of the trends the company is seeing regarding electrification of drivetrain components. So thank you for joining me today, Alexander. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Maybe just to kind of start the discussion, what would maybe be some of the benefits of developing drivetrain components specifically for electric vehicles and equipment, as I know Allison Transmission has been doing? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think the key point for electrification is all around efficiency. Efficiency has an outsized impact for electric vehicles when compared to conventional vehicles because it impacts the size, cost, and weight of the battery pack, which is the largest and certainly the most expensive cost component on the vehicle. So if you're able to increase the efficiency by 10%, you can reduce the battery pack size, cost, and weight accordingly. And that's where developing drivetrain-specific components for electric vehicles comes in. Uh, you can do things that are very different to a conventional vehicle, for example, powering auxiliary systems like steering and braking electrically rather than via power takeoff. They can improve the efficiency significantly. Another couple of points to mention there are the fact that an electric motor runs very differently to an internal combustion engine. You have a wide torque range and a very wide speed range. So you want to optimize that in order to get better efficiency. And of course, you're also running at a high voltage, 650 volts. Nominal is normal compared to conventional vehicles, where if you do have any electric motors spinning, they're often at 24 volts or even 12 volts in some cases. So taking into account those differences definitely helps improve overall system efficiency. And what are some of the challenges associated with developing drivetrain components for electric vehicles? And maybe what are some of the ways that Allison Transmission is working to overcome those challenges? So I think there's two main challenges. First is that there is no one size fits all, particularly if you look through the lens that Allison has, we're, we're proud to serve over 300 OEMs with approximately that many different types of applications and many more times that number of vehicles. So you have a great variation that's required in your component tree uh, that's needed to satisfy this diverse range of vehicles. So to tackle that, we're working on a very diverse product portfolio, initially on propulsion systems, so the stuff that spins the wheels. But we have programs examining other aspects of the powertrain as well, such as batteries and control system and vehicle integration. Uh, so that's primarily the way in which you'd deal with that. I think the other area is cost. I think we're all fully aware that cost is a much bigger factor than conventional vehicles. And so you know, we're in a good position to try and reduce costs through leveraging volume and uh, investing in manufacturing techniques and materials and processes to uh, reduce cost there as well. And so I know Allison Transmission recently introduced its eGen Power 100D electric axles and the just overall eGen portfolio of products. Could you maybe talk about those products a little bit and maybe the eGen Power 100D specifically, kind of going into sort of how they work and some of the benefits that they offer? Yeah, sure. So the eGen Power 100D is, is an e-axle, as you pointed out. And the first point to note is, is the nomenclature that we use. So the 100 references the fact that it's a 10-ton or, or 10,400 kilo rated axle and the D refers to dual motor. So two electric motors that are used in parallel to spin the wheels. A couple of the key differences that this e-axle has over others is the fact that we have the electric motors, this is going to be a mouthful, coaxial with the axis of the e-axle. So what that means is the line of the e-axle from wheel to wheel, we have the motor axis in the same direction. And that allows for a much more efficient transfer of energy than you'd get in a typical axle where you have the prop shaft coming in at a 90 degree angle. That alone saves three to 5% worth of energy. And so that's a key difference in our product compared to others. Now we also have all the electric motors, gearing and differential, cooling, thermal management, all housed in a central housing. So a uh, very dense from a componentry point of view, and that gives us 
packaging advantages. So more space for batteries or cargo than other solutions. And lastly is its performance. So Allison is known as a provider of performance products, and that's the same with our e-axles. So we have a multi-speed transmission as standard in our 100D that gives us high gradeability as well as high top speed without compromising on efficiency. So how does this technology maybe fit in with some of the trends you guys are seeing regarding electric vehicles and components that are being developed for electric vehicles? Yeah, so if we if we go back, not even that long, maybe four or five years, many of the components that were needed in these vehicles hadn't been developed yet. Many companies that were doing their trials with this kind of technology were taking what they could get off the market, putting them together in a powertrain. You know, they were good, they worked, but they weren't necessarily optimized. So for example, you take propulsion units, the vast majority of these early electric vehicles, be they in the transit application or truck applications, used a direct drive motor. So just a a single motor, possibly with a single stage gear ratio to increase the torque and drop the speed through a normal prop shaft into a normal axle, through a normal differential, and you'd get your wheel spinning. As we've discussed already, that has uh, packaging implications, it has performance, it has efficiency implications as well. So the trend is towards much more customized and purpose-built solutions for the industry. And that is, you can kind of see that when you have this direct drive on one hand and a highly integrated e-axle designed specifically for trucks with axles of that rating, you end up with a proliferation of components that are much better suited. So we're seeing that very much in the propulsion side. We're driving much of that as well as you'd expect, but you're seeing that on the battery pack side as well. Initially, there were sort of packs thrown together and they were kind of not quite a one size fits all, but there wasn't a great deal of variation. I think now you are seeing companies really focusing in on application specific technologies to improve lifetime, safety, performance. So how does Allison Transmission you foresee electrification progressing in the coming years? Are there any specific trends or technologies, maybe particularly on the drivetrain component side that guys are seeing? Even over the last year, when the world's been distracted with, with other things going on, of course, and we've seen an acceleration in the interest and commitment to electrification from our customers. And that is something we we very much are supporting and and will continue to support in the future. Partially as as a result of that and of our own internal convictions and research, we don't see this as a trend that's going away anytime soon. The world is on a trend to increasing electrification. And we see that happening in several ways. So you have, of course, pure electric vehicles, which we've spoken about. And I think we'll see an increasing trend towards those, particularly in the areas of transit and terminal tractor, uh, pickup and delivery type applications where routes are relatively short and well-defined and there's a, a depot where the vehicles can be recharged. I think you'll see also a trend towards fuel cell electric vehicles where loads may be particularly high or routes are particularly long and we're seeing a lot of companies investing in that space as well. And our propulsion portfolio is really geared towards supporting either one of those directions. But I think lastly, hybrid solutions are by no means gone. I think many companies are seeing that as a long lasting stepping stone because there are challenges which electric technology is not yet ready to overcome, either from a performance perspective or from a cost perspective. And hybrid really allows us to leverage the best of clean diesel where that's available, as well as the high voltage electric motors and battery packs to lower emissions, improve performance, and reduce the, the noise and carbon footprint from these vehicles. So really those three areas, hybrid still got a way left to go, but ultimately electric and fuel cell electric. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today about some of the trends and technologies you guys are developing and seeing in the industry. My pleasure. Um, Thanks for the questions. Thanks for the interest and uh, very happy to talk to you.